Hey, I'm checking page here with no time to be sad. Hey, it's time for another Q&A. Q&A. Okay, I've got quite a few questions, so let's get started. The first question is by Graham Cameron. Graham says, thank you, Chuck and Paige, for sharing your life. You're welcome. He's got two questions. He noticed that there is a large propane tank under the counter. With all the cooking that's done in the house, how many times do you need to replace or refill the tank, and how much does it cost? Um, I don't know how much does it cost. Do you know how much it costs? The tank, the gas tank? I'll have to ask my mother-in-law. I'll put the price down on the bottom. Anyway, she doesn't really cook during the week that much. Only sometimes her friends will come over for lunch and they'll cook. Um, but mostly on Sunday. So a tank will last her about three months. But she has two. And all she does is call the guy up and he'll come swap it out. So she's never out of gas. Who that call my name? The next question is from Elvis Holder. Alvis says, uh, do they have scheduled cleaning for AC in Thailand? The reason I ask is they do in the Philippines, I think it's a scam. In the States, AC lasts about 25 years without cleaning. Well, I don't know about the Philippines, but we have what's called a pack unit here where you have the actual um, condenser and compressor outside. And inside is just an evaporator with the blower. So. I know that in our room, because uh, somebody likes to use a lot of baby powder happy, at night, happy joy, joy, happy, happy always joy, joy. Joy. gets a lot of dust in the uh, in the filter. Anyway, my mother-in-law the other night, they, actually they both slept in here because their air conditioner stopped working. Well, it didn't stop working. They had the air conditioner unit replaced. Uh, before we moved here, but they never cleaned the little filter out of it and it stopped working. To answer your question, um, I do all the cleaning. Well, I take the vents down and Paige cleans the, the, the filters. And um, her mom and, or her dad will call a guy and have them come whenever they seem to not be blowing that cold. But we have a lot of dust that comes through the house so it gets up in the filters, but it's easy to do yourself. Um, I don't think they've ever, I've never seen anybody service the outside condenser uh, with anything. Next question, Dennis Cross. Great videos, thank you. I lived there for a few years and two things you did smarter than, than me was buy a truck and go for the language lessons. The first of your videos I have access to shows you with your truck already. Did you discuss on earlier videos how you de decided on new or used? Also, why the Fortuna? <laughs> you must be Thai. Fortuner. If so, I doubt it. Dennis Cross doesn't sound like a Thai name. But <laughs> if so, could you link it, please? Yes, I made a couple of videos uh, about purchasing my truck. I'll put the link up right here. I originally was going to buy a brand new Fortuner. The original plan was my father-in-law has a... Camrys are just as expensive as the Fortuner. He paid about two million baht for his Camry. And uh, he really didn't want us to have two vehicles. So he figured, well, I'll just trade mine in. And he figured he could get about a million baht in a trade in. And then I'll put the rest in a new one and then we'll have a new truck. Well, it didn't work out because the dealer only wanted to give him, I think four or 600,000 baht for his Camry. So he decided to keep it. But, um, I decided that I really didn't want to, I wanted to go shop for used Fortuner, so her dad had a, a friend that knew a broker in Bangkok and we looked, at, we, we actually, I found one that was pretty decent here locally in the town next to us, uh, but his, the guy wanted to sell it, but his wife didn't really want to sell it because he wanted to take the money and buy a new uh, Ford Everest, yeah, so it didn't work out, but anyway, it had some funky custom wheels on it, I didn't really like it. So we got this one here. It was a, just a little bit over a million baht. Uh, it had 40,000 kilometers on it when I bought it. Now it's over 100 and something. <laughs> but uh, 
here's the thing on the Toyotas. I've been a mechanic for most of my life, so I know Toyotas are very low maintenance vehicles. Parts are inexpensive, and a lot of the quality is built to last on a Toyota vehicle. So that being said, every single little town in Thailand has a Toyota dealership. So it's very convenient for us to take it to a Toyota dealership, and the prices are unbelievably inexpensive to get anything done on the vehicle. But I picked the TRD. You guys see some of the locations that we travel to. Uh, it has a great suspension on it, which is very important in Thailand, not only for the potholes, but dodging uh, objects coming at you, so. My suggestion is a pickup truck or an SUV. I really like the Fortuner. It's an extremely popular vehicle. Um, I could have got a regular Fortuner used uh, for half of the price too than what I paid. But this, I, this is, I plan on the only vehicle to ever own in Thailand. So uh, if the motor blows up, I'll just get it replaced. No big, the little three liter diesel is a very good, very good engine. And yes, there is a, when you go to register, uh, there's a tax that you have to pay every year. Next question, Scott Williams. You said that Thai people shut down if foreigners speak Thai fluently. Why is that? Here's um, my experience with that. I've traveled with Thai people a lot, and uh, not my immediately family or close friends, but when you get around a bunch of people, they like to, they, they're very nosy, <laughs> and they like to ask you a lot of questions. But that being said, they're even nosier to their friends talking about you while you're sitting there. I think just like anybody, right, will we'll do that. So once they find out that you, uh, they don't really know how much I know, but they do know that I can speak some Thai. And then all of a sudden they get a little bit quieter because they don't, uh, I don't know, they don't want to offend me maybe. The thing is, is that Thai people will talk about each other in front of, you know, oh, you're fat, you know, or whatever. And then the lady's sitting right there, they don't care. Uh, my mother-in-law does it on the porch all the time, but you know, they don't really know how to deal with Westerners. So they just, they, they shut down if they, because they really don't know what to, what to say when they're around you, you know? Next question, Peter Flying Dutchman. You keep trying and almost every time get disappointed. When in Rome, do as the Romans. Stick to the Thai food. So much better than the hamburgers and steaks in Thailand. Yes, you are 100% right. The food in Thailand is awesome, wonderful, but what's the problem with me trying to seek something that I'm comfortable with or, or hamburger or steak? I'm kind of, it's kind of fun trying to find the steak. Um, you know, I'm just trying to have a good time with it. Uh, I have had really good hamburgers in Thailand, but I know you guys see, uh, you know, when we're traveling or we're in a search for a burger or a good steak, but I live here permanently every single day. So uh, in my little town, mostly you can get Vietnamese food, some Chinese food, all Thai food, um, and Isan food. So I'm limited to, my taste buds are limited to just Asian food mostly. So. I guess maybe I'm a spoiled American. You know, we have such a variety of food in the United States. It's extremely good because we have a lot of cultures uh, in one. So they all bring their cuisine with them. So just trying to uh, sometimes get a good burger. Relax. <laughs> Next question, C. Paul. Paul, Powell, C. Powell. Hi, can I ask for a big favor? Next time you're around a pharmacy, can you ask if one is able to just walk in and get a Victoza pin? It's for type two diabetes without having to see a doctor first and what the cost might be. Thank you very much. Well, let's go take a walk down the street and talk to my friend Jack and uh, see if he's got any information on the, uh, on the pin. Hey Jack, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I want to ask you a question about a Victoza yeah, pen. It's a, uh, for type 2 diabetes. Yeah. Can you tell me if it's available in Thailand? Yeah, the Victoza is an injectable medication. It's available in Thailand. How much? The, the price is, you know, it depends on the location, but right. it's roughly about five to six thousand baht. Okay, that, so that's a couple hundred, little under a couple hundred US dollars. Yeah, and there are that. two pens in one box. Two pens in one box. So, can they get this easily, you think, 
throughout Thailand or? And, yeah, but have you, but, but make sure that you have to check, uh, I mean, this one is quite special. Uh, Maybe you have to buy in the quite big pharmacy. I see. Uh, but no, no need prescription for this one. No prescription. That was what I was going to ask next. So they don't have to, they just ask for it and you give it. Is there any other kind of similar product like that? Uh, yeah, because they are so, so, so many, uh, like a brand name or trade name. Uh -huh. with, uh, I mean, but the same ingredients, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but just different brand. I see, okay. Cool. So lots of options on that. Yes. I guess because Thai people have diabetes too, right? So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks for answering. Yeah, so there, there you, you go. go. I hope that answers your question. Next question, Lonnie Klinkenberg. Great info, Chuck. Thank you very much. Do the hospitals work with TRICARE overseas for military retirees? Um, I have quite a few subscribers that are ex-military retired. Um, yes, they do. I'll give you some links um, in the description box of this video. You can take a look at some of the options for the TRICARE where it's accepted. Next question from Lana King. Too many ads in this video, Chuck, spoils it. Also, kind of the same, but I get this a lot. Chiptune 100 says, too many commercials, I'm gone. Oh well, up to you, maybe you, you probably won't hear this <laughs> anyway. So look guys, you know, I, uh, I make money on YouTube, surprise. Um, the ads uh, that YouTube places on the video, I get revenue from that, a portion of that. So I just chose to allow YouTube to decide how many commercials go on a video. Um, sometimes there's like six, very rare are there that many. I notice that if it's a really long video and I get a lot of views at first, then they'll start dumping some ads, but it's mostly just a little clickable ad that you can just click an X and it goes away. Um, but I just let them do it. Most of them have maybe one or two on there, but uh, I just don't feel like messing with, I wanna put two here, one here, or one at this time and one at that time. I'd rather let you two make the decision since they're the ones that are getting the uh, advertisers to pay to watch, or to pay to advertise on my video. But anyway, what's the big deal? You know, you pay for cable TV and you gotta suffer through commercials or maybe you'll do a pay-per-view uh, event and still have to suffer through commercials. At least on YouTube, you can click past it. Um, I don't know, come on guys, if you're that picky then, I can't. I, there's nothing I can do to help you. Next question, Captain Fish. Hey Chuck, how many years did Paige live in the USA? I know a lot of my subscribers or viewers are tired of me answering this question. I, I made a couple of videos uh, about it. I'll let the, the videos answer it. Paige and her brother moved to America when she was 15 years old. She had, she had a choice, she could either go to school in Bangkok University or go to America. So her and her brother decided to go to America and her parents said, if you go there, you have to completely finish and get a job and you can't come back. So I met Paige in Texas in 2007. And I never even been to Thailand. Yeah, and I'll leave a link to the video that you can watch. Um, it's about 20 questions that are always asked about me and Paige um, over and over again, but yeah, I get asked that a lot. I know it's difficult for people to uh, wade through all my videos. Next question. Phyllis4466, how did your mother-in-law get the nickname Mafia? Or is that her actual name? <laughs> uh. Is that her actual name, Mafia? <laughs> okay, when I first got here, I was very stressed out about some issues I was having with my extension. I'll, I'll share the, uh, the initial uh, quote out of the video that I made about so, it. You know, I just, everything changes kind of as you go. And, you know, I'm married to a Thai woman for 10 years. I have money in the bank, there shouldn't be a problem. It's just the, the stuff that you have to deal with. Anyway, this morning, 
my mother-in-law sees that I'm a little distraught still. She's like, uh, and she tries to tell me in English that, uh, don't worry about it. Everything's gonna be fine. And I told her that I just, I did, I'm sorry, I just didn't understand. Uh, I don't understand the process and Paige can't explain it to me. And I just, I'm just a little confused, you know. So she said, don't worry, I'm the soy mafia. And uh, she'll take care of everything. And so I looked at Paige and I'm like, did she just call herself the soy mafia? <laughs> I said, I thought that, that that made me laugh big time. Yeah, so, so you know, uh, my mother-in-law is a, uh, usually whatever she says goes. <laughs> She's a, a strong woman, I, I'll tell you that. And that's Junior sitting over here. What are you doing, man? Do Lazada? Lazada. Next question, Missy Lorna. Great info, Chuck, thank you. How is the dog zapper going? Dog stop us riding. She's talking about my little flashlight I bought. I bought this uh, actually in front of, in Big C. Inside Big C, but out in the front where they have all those little carts. Uh, there's always somebody that sells like knives and pellet guns and flashlights. And, but they have this zapper, she had it in a drawer, but yeah, when the dogs hear that, they run. Not all of them. I've had some chasing me on my bike full blast, but I mounted it on my bike and I can take it off real quick. And But it's difficult while you're going fast to be chased by an animal to get it down there. But I've had a couple that just didn't care. And I've never actually touched one, got <laughs> close enough to touch one yet. But uh, real quick story, I, I had a flat tire the other day in the Compagnon. And I pulled into this little driveway and there was a residence way in the back and I could hear a dog barking back there. I turned my bicycle upside down and I started to work on my tire. Well, about 10 minutes into it, I go to turn around to get my patch kit and there's two dogs like stalking me, like walking really slow in a straight line towards me. And I'm lucky that I saw the dogs. And I turn around, I saw them, I grabbed my, I, I yanked my flashlight off and I hit the deal and they just took off super fast. So I was real lucky. The, the dog situation here is horrible. You know, everybody's got a lot of suggestions about carrying uh, items like spray, pepper, and all kind of stuff, but uh, It's difficult when you're riding a bicycle at 20, 30 kilometers per hour and there's a dog come out of nowhere to get you. So, um, yeah, it's it's not any good in Thailand. I will tell you a couple things that work. This does work and it's easy to just push the button and it works. I will say 80% of the time this works. Just the noise works. And the other thing that worked was if you see the dog, stop pedaling because when they see your feet going pretty fast, they get excited. So just stop pedaling and you'll see a little change in their attitude. But that works. I haven't been, I have not been bit yet. So I have been bit when I was a kid, but not in Thailand. Next question, Paul left, Paul of all, Paul, the, <laughs> Paul the Vol. I think. I don't know. I'm sorry. Hey, Chuck, I've been following you and Paige for a while now. Love the channel. Thank you. I have a totally off the wall question. I am currently in Pitsanulak. 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 Am I saying that right? No. Well, Pitsanulak. Yeah, that's where I'm, that's where I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. Have you ever found Mexican style tortillas in Thailand? If so, where? I am dying for some Mexican food. Thank you. Awesome Mexican restaurant in Ubon. There was a couple that we found in Chiang Mai, but they weren't all that great. Um, but tortillas are super easy to make. Um, you can make them with a rolling pin and a piece of plastic, or you can, uh, actually a subscriber brought me a tortilla press. Uh, all the way from the United States. That thing is heavy too. All it is is flour. I don't use oil, I use butter, a little bit of salt, and some water, some warm water. Then you let it sit for a little while, 
and then you just roll it out and, and that's it. It's really super easy, to, really easy to make. Uh, but Village Market and Udon, I think there's more Village Markets in Thailand. They, they had some uh, tortillas there and I've seen them in macro in the frozen section where they'll have like frozen pizza dough. Um, but the, it's sometimes the stuff's there, sometimes it's not. I, I know nobody's buying tortillas, but I don't know, maybe they just rotate it out or I don't know what they do with it. But usually if you see something interesting uh, that you might want, just buy it because chances are it's not going to be there next time you want it. Super easy to make. Next question is from Pamela. Uh, she sent me a Facebook message here, wanted to know uh, about uh, health care for people over the age of 70. There's not a lot of information. I'll share a website with you in the description box. Uh, you can contact these people in Thailand and see if they can help you out. Uh, they've got a pretty decent website. Your options are very slim. Now, if you're here before the age of 65 and you've been paying into an insurance company, then yeah. But there are a lot of people 70 years and older that live in Thailand, a lot. And the cost for medical is, is, is very inexpensive. Medical care in Thailand is extremely inexpensive and most people just pay as they go. Uh, there's all kinds of options for, for health care, from government hospitals, uh, which still have really good quality doctors, it's just the wait time is not good, oh, and there's all kinds of levels of private hospitals. So, uh, a lot of people here are on the pay as you go. Next question is from Darren Sutton. He's got a couple of questions. Why don't you have a drone for your videos? This question's been asked a few times. I heard you say you need a permit. Is that the reason? Not that you need one, just wondering why not. On Sunday fun days, you spend a lot of time cooking with the ladies. What are the men doing? Do you hang with them? What are they doing with their Sunday? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really want a drone. I, I do a lot of videos as you can see and you know I don't really and I'm trying to evolve a little better into my editing skills and have you know b-roll and all this stuff but I feel like I'm just bringing you along for my adventure and I really don't want to feed you guys with a bunch of beautiful scenery shots and b-roll and some background music and because I'm trying to fill some space because I really don't have much to say and I'm just trying to make a video. <laughs> I can talk throughout a 30 minute video, no problem. So trying to fit drone stuff in, I just, I don't, it would be too much for me to try to, okay, you gotta, we gotta set up here and I gotta fly my drone over here. and I've gotta do all these things. Maybe if I was only making a couple videos a week, uh, maybe I'll get to that point permit deal I'm not really too worried about that I know everybody's always freaked out about regulations and rules and crap in Thailand um, yeah that's just a never-ending topic but anyway I've seen kids and Thai people and people flying drones and I've never once seen anybody come ask uh, for their permit but I have seen plenty of signs that say no drones um, so that being said when you purchase a drone in Thailand, you can buy one at Robinson's Mall and they will get you insurance and register it with Thailand as part of the purchase. So it's really not, that's not a big deal. You can get it online too in some of the, like in Lazada and they do it for you also. But I'm just not, I don't really need it. I really don't do a lot of cooking with the ladies because I have to stay out of their way. They really don't mind being on the camera so I'm lucky for that. Um, they like to watch their videos with them cooking and their friends and stuff. What are the men doing? Sunday is probably my father-in-law's most boringest day on the planet because the shop's closed. So he just sleeps all day. Um, yeah, pretty much sleeps all day. The shop is closed because it's Labor Day in here. You know, a lot of the men that come over here on Sunday fun days, they're already pretty much drunk. <laughs> They just sit around with their friends. It's not like they're gonna go paint the house or, yeah, do some yard work. What do you? What do the men you think usually do on Sundays? Mm -hmm. What do the men typically do on Sundays? You think? 
just hang out, huh? We really don't do anything. I mean, most of the people. Oh, yep, watching soccer, hanging out with their buds. Most of the group of people in our Sunday fun days are either retired or they actually work, so. But on Sundays, they don't really like to do a whole lot. Next question, Vernon Hancock. Are there safe storage businesses where you can leave valuables like clothing, computers, and luggage if I wanted to travel out of Thailand for several months? Yes, um, I'll put some links in the description box of the video. There's a couple of places in Bangkok. I've seen these places in our travels. Um, I know there's one in Udon. Um, you know, on a side note, you can, when I was trying to research if there was one in the airport, there are plenty of luggage storage places in the mall. But I can't get any information if they're long term or not. But um, if you guys are coming to Thailand and you're bringing a bunch of crap, you know, you can go to these uh, luggage service places and just give them all your crap and they'll deliver it to wherever you're going so you don't have to worry about carrying it around. Or if you're going to go someplace uh, before you go to your hotel or, or whatever, and it's, it's very inexpensive uh, to do that. A lot of those places in the airport charge 100 baht a day to store your, your, belong, your backpack, your luggage, your stuff like that. But they do have long-term storage units in Thailand. Well, that's it, guys. That's the end of the questions. I've got some more saved up for the next one. Got quite a few uh, questions still to answer, but I do try to answer most of them on the computer and share links to videos or other videos that uh, other people have posted to try to get you your answer. And you guys are always uh, awesome help in, in answering some of the questions and sharing your experiences also. So anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, the video if you liked it click like um, if you got some stuff to add please leave it in the comment box and uh, subscribe and i'll see you guys uh, on the next video bye